Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Shit Your Therapist Won't Tell You. I am super jazzed for this solo episode. So before we jump into our topic for today, let's get into my favorite intro segment, what I've been watching, reading, and loving recently. So I am still finishing The Bear, which is incredible, and of course no spoilers, but I'm halfway through the second season. It is so well written, just moving and touching, and can't recommend it enough. And of course, I'm still watching The X-Files, which I won't mention every time, but definitely celebrating right now because I'm finally caught up with where the podcast that I'm listening to, which is The EX-Files, is toward the end of season one. And so I am caught up to that, so I won't have to keep binging both back to back. But it is just so phenomenal. If you've ever considered watching The X-Files, now is the time to jump in because this podcast is incredible. I mean, these are the women who co-hosted my previous favorite podcast, uh, Buffering the Vampire Slayer, and they are just doing another phenomenal job with this one. So highly recommend. The watching, or sorry, the reading segment is a little different this time, but it is on Audible. It's not a book though, it is an audio drama. And speaking of buffering and Buffy, it is called Slayers, which was released just recently, earlier this month, on the 20th anniversary, I think, of the end of the show. It is co-written by Tara Benson, who played Tara on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, along with Christopher Golden, and they both co-directed it along with Casey Wayland. It is really, really good so far. I'm just a few... Um, I guess you could call them episodes, I think. The the audio drama is broken down into eight or nine segments. I think they call them episodes. And then the buffering folks, Kristen and Jenny, are resurrecting buffering cast to do an episode for each one of those. So I'm currently listening to those uh, weekly as they are bringing the podcast episodes up. So good, so good. Brings me a lot of joy. What I'm loving, other than that recently, is Fire Road Foods. OMG, I'm obsessed and I am totally manifesting sometime in 2024, calling that in as a sponsor of the show. If you've been listening for a while, you know that I have tried a number of different sort of meal kit, meal delivery services, and this is my favorite one that I have discovered and the ingredients are all flash frozen. It's a great combination of whole foods and some meat alternatives. And like it says, it is really performance nutrition. So it's geared toward athletes who are fueling their bodies. So it's definitely enough food as opposed to some of the other things like Daily Harvest that I'm like, it's tasty, but it's barely a snack, not a meal. So really, really loving that fits right in with our topic today that I'll introduce in a moment. And also speaking of, of being an athlete, which I believe that anyone who wants to call themselves an athlete is an athlete, because <laughs> I'm really just usually a Peloton athlete. I'm not, not a sports girly, but I really am loving getting back into my Sydney Cummings workouts. I've gone on and off with her because I'm usually doing Peloton stuff, but she's an amazing YouTube trainer and she's very strength focused. So I'm doing her reps two program that as I'm recording this just started yesterday. But if you're listening to this at any point in the future, she's always running new programs and it's never too late to just jump right in with wherever things are. It is so great and I am so very sore. <laughs> so today's topic, we are talking about what it actually means to be a quote-unquote high performer. And let's start with, raise a hand if you are also a recovering gifted child. <laughs> I actually, while I was thinking about this, looked up gifted child characteristics, and they include the following. Here's a nice little list for you. Enthusiastic about unique interests and topics, quirky or mature sense of humor, creative problem solving and imaginative expression, absorbs information quickly with few repetitions needed, 
what a nice list, right? They left out like crippling perfectionism and anxiety, uh, <laughs> self-loathing, all of those things that often also come along with being a gifted child, or as we might say in adulthood, ambitious, driven, high achieving. It really is a superpower, but like any superpower, gone unchecked, untrained, untamed, it can come with a lot of really painful experiences. So having this gift and bringing it to fruition in the world of being a high performer, a high achiever, we really do need shaping and training and support for that to fully live into that gift and in a way that doesn't eat us alive. So some of those intense challenges, and these are things that I have all experienced before I really cultivated the right skills, the right mindsets, um, which I'll get a bit into what some of that is. But some of those challenges are like not feeling like you're ever living up to your potential or like you're ever doing enough, whatever that means. Not really knowing if you're setting goals or achieving things for the quote unquote right reasons or if you're doing them to please somebody or to follow the script of what it means in your family or in our culture to be successful. And always having a minimum of 37 tabs open on your computer and at least that many in your brain at any given time having 8,000 exciting ideas at once and paralyzed with how to move forward on it in the quote-unquote best way, so getting stuck in inaction and procrastination. Tendencies toward workaholism and I'll just do one more thing and then looking up and it's been two more hours. Having a hard time knowing when you should push yourself or aim bigger, work harder versus give yourself grace, give yourself a break, and ultimately just trying to balance having high ambition and a big vision with trying to believe that you are already enough, that you have enough, that you're doing enough right now. Can we take a sigh of relief after that, right? Like, oh, it's a lot. It's a lot. And really not everyone desires to be a high performer in life. And honestly, that is totally fine. But since you're still listening to this, I have a very strong hunch that you, my friend, do have that desire, like I do. And once I learned how to wield that sword more effectively, I could actually move toward those goals and ambitions in a way that didn't like crush me, frankly. But it really took a lot of work to get there and implementing a lot of the mindsets and strategies that I've learned through high performance study. So again, what does high performance really mean? It means developing the behaviors, the mindsets that can help us succeed beyond standard norms consistently over the long term while, and here comes the kicker, because <laughs> we know a lot of people who can do that first part and the second part goes to hell, while maintaining positive well-being and relationships right? Because if we're ambitious and we're succeeding and we're killing it professionally, we're making a shitload of money, whatever, but our well-being sucks, our relationships suck, what's the fucking point, right? So it really is about holding the, the whole picture holistically, right? That's the true meaning of holistic is the whole damn thing. Because without that, what is even the point? So high performance is not just about working harder, working more hours. It is not only for corporate executives or Olympic athletes, but it helps them in the same way that it might help a first-time mom or a college student, an accountant, a dancer, an entrepreneur. So in other words, it's really for anyone who's looking to live and serve at a higher level while also feeling more joy, more presence, more aliveness, more meaning in their day-to-day -day life sign me up, right? <laughs> That's me. That's what I want. That's what I've committed my entire life to really. And of course that includes, it includes all of it, it includes the relationships, it includes the well-being, but I want to do all of it at a high level of joy and passion and service. So I just completed training with the High Performance Institute to become a certified high performance coach. 
and you'll hear me use the term CHPC, Certified High Performance Coach. Brendan Burchard, who is a longtime coach and online business guy, he coaches like the top, top level people. Like you have to be really, really high level to work with him at this point. But, you know, he started at the bottom like the rest of us and over the past 17 years has developed this whole body of work. And he developed this framework for high performance coaching about 10 years ago and since has partnered with a lot of people and organizations to research and vet it and improve it. And he continues to this day using this same framework with his clients who are CEOs of Fortune 500 companies and Silicon Valley startups, they're pro athletes, they're national political leaders. These are the same sessions that he is doing with them that I, as a CHPC, can now do with my clients. And I'm freaking excited about it. (laughs) So what exactly is certified high performance coaching? It is a science-backed, results-oriented proven coaching curriculum that focuses on developing specific outcomes-based tools that help clients reach their next level of success in every area of life. And it's really different from traditional like life coaching, which is often status-driven, like, hey, how's it going? What are you struggling with? What are you working on? Not to say that that can't be valuable, but that's really what drove me to really want to do this program was the outcomes focus. That's also part of why clients report such high levels of success and satisfaction with CHPC. They get actual results. So a lot of other coaching programs and frankly, a lot of therapy too, whether it's life coaching, business coaching, career coaching, it's like listening based, it's client directed, it's unclear on outcomes and there's no way of really knowing whether the program will actually have a lot of value you're just kind of trusting whatever like flowery promises are described in the marketing and believe me i have been bitten more than once more than five times probably on programs that were marketed so well but lacked actual substance and value and i would just end the sessions or end the program and like going like, what did I just spend my money on, right? Like, ugh, it's not a good feeling. So obviously that's, again, not the case with like, this is the only type of qual- of quality coaching. It just depends on the coach. But this is like the value is baked in because the framework is so proven and results-oriented and research-based. It is also really inclusive of training and education and coaching toward a specific goal. So yes, there's room for it to be customized and individualized, and we're going to still be moving towards those specific outcomes. Um, One thing I think is really cool is the High Performance Institute teamed up with a third-party organization to track over 37,000 CHPC sessions delivered by tons of coaches in over 170 countries. So wide variety of coaches, but the results were the the client satisfaction rating was a 9.6 out of 10 overall. That is the highest score ever recorded for any multi-month coaching program. It's really, really cool. And they also developed this high performance indicator partnering with the, the MAP program, the Masters of Applied Positive Psychology program at Penn to develop this indicator. And the scores on this strongly correlate with external measures of success like sales performance, GPA, promotion odds, et cetera, as well as quality of life outcomes like happiness, confidence, relationships, health, and that doing the high-performance coaching can increase clients' scores on that HPI, on that indicator. Being a high performer is an identity that anyone can choose to step into. It's just about having that desire and commitment to leveling up in every area of your life that matters to you. So the certified high performance coaching can really affect every life area, even if you're starting with like one primary thing that you're like, I just want to improve this in my career or in my my craft or whatever the thing is, you're going to improve across a variety of life domains. 
and, and faster than you thought possible, supporting you in feeling inspired to take positive, meaningful, inspired action every day. It's about living full in, all out, personally and professionally. And if you're ready for these advanced strategies, not just like crap that you can get watching TikTok or even listening to podcasts like this, but really advanced high-level strategies to better master yourself and your life, this is the support that you want. Again, it's research-driven, it's results-oriented curriculum that has helped CEOs, uh, Hollywood actors, musicians, Olympic athletes, Oprah, Usher, and so on. That is why... I invested, frankly, a lot of money in getting trained in this framework. I already have several other coaching certifications, not to mention a master's degree and 12 years working as a psychotherapist, four years leading my own team as a business owner, entrepreneur. I have been trained in a lot of things, and yet this was kind of that missing piece for me. This was the thing that I was like, I want this framework. I I know how powerful it is. I went to one of Brendan's live events recently and I was like, Psh, I am not I'm not investing in anything here. And I was blown away by seeing the actual results of CHPC and I was like, let me in. <laughs> Please take my money. <laughs> So this is really going to become the cornerstone of my coaching work moving forward. And I'm probably going to come up with some kind of cute name for it because, you know, that's just how I operate. But it really is the certified high performance coaching framework. Like I will individualize it. I will bring my own magic to this offering, but I am using the framework because the framework is results oriented and proven. And I would love to support you. I am actually offering right now a free 60-minute high-performance coaching strategy session to the first five people who submit an application for it. My free strategy sessions are usually much shorter than that, and I don't even offer a one-off 60-minute session outside of my programs, but if I did, I would be charging at least $500 for it. So This is yours free if you're one of the first five people to submit an application for it. There's no commitment to anything beyond that, just this free session to get a ton of value out of it. So if you want to apply for that, you can visit bit.ly slash badbitchstrategy, all lowercase, bit.ly slash badbitchstrategy. That'll be in the show notes. I am just so freaking excited, if you can't tell, if it's that obvious yet, to bring this framework to people. And just talking at the the event that I was at last month in Austin, talking with some other folks who were already certified in this framework, like, mind-blowing, mind-blowing. I'm like, let's fucking go. If you want in on this framework to take every area of your life to the next level, more joy, more presence, better well-being and relationships, get in. Get one of those free 60-minute strategy sessions. You will walk away with already having some tools and strategies. And like, of course, going to go way hella deeper if you actually decide to join the program, but you're going to walk away with tangible results-driven strategies from that free session. Come on in, my friends, and I will see you in the next episode.